that St. Joe's up four. And the reason that St. Joe's bench is so frustrated is because their motto this entire season has been one more pass, an unselfish motto. And as Dan Bonner's been talking about this entire second half, one more pass has become one more dribble. And that's not what it takes to get it done with Phil Marcelli's offense. See if they get that turned around as St. Joe's has the basketball. 7.33 left to go. Game two here in the West. Myers dribbling all the way in. Lola Candy comes down with a rebound. And a whistle behind the play and another tee. St. Joe's, one on the bench, one on Myers. Their second of the game. Terrell Myers really frustrated. He drives to the basket and misses the shot, and I think that's the primary reason is that he went into the basket and he missed the shot, and he got tangled up, and a couple of guys went down, and Myers said something to the official as he went up the court. Myers 0 for 6 from the field. And Bowman for Pacific. There's the technical called on Myers, creating the opportunity for Pacific here at the line. Now Pacific, he's got it. Pacific has converted all four technical free throws and in a close game. Oh, what a difference. Those are really big, big points. And the lead has been cut to two. St. Joe's has led by as many as 11 in this game. Three Weiler. Although Candy's in underneath and they go to it. Three Weiler double team. It's Petrovich. Not That's a nice one. job. Nice job. The double team inside by Simmons. All of the candy forced into the turnaround jump shot. Now let's see if St. Joe's can get the ball moving a little bit on the offensive end. Davis who had the rebound for three. Well, I guess not, but when you knock down the three-point shot, it makes your offense look a lot better. Davis gets his second three-pointer at 57. Three-point buckets during the regular season. Yeah, Davis. Five-point lead again for St. Joe's. That's for three, and that's off by Bowman. And Petrovich has the rebound. And Bob Thomason up telling Bowman, hey, look, we've got to move the ball around and get it inside. That's where we've had success. Delani, Bay, three. Big, big bucket. Two big three-point buckets, and Bay is up to 22 points in this game. And just like that, the St. Joe's lead is back to eight. Good ball movement that time by St. Joe's. And Bay moving well without the ball gets open and drills it. Pacific needs to remain patient now on the foul as they go through the lane. A reach in from behind. Petrovich, I believe, called for it. Tried to knock the ball away on the drive through the middle. And they will call it instead on Davis. It'll be his second personal foul. Freeweiler will come out of the basketball game. And Rain Mahaffey comes back in. Gary, and I think that offensive patience is really the key for each of these teams. Pacific has shown the ability to score when they can get it into the hands of Mahaffey or all of the candy inside. Plenty of time left in the game. They don't need to panic, and so they can certainly do that. 558 left here in the second half. Point number five for Corey Anders. All these free throws really add up, especially for Pacific being behind here. 58-52, St. Joe's on top. And the key for St. Joe's, they've built the lead. Now they have to maintain the lead by moving the ball effectively on offense. For three, not a particularly good shot by Simmons, who was well behind the line. Bowman. Although Candy's still underneath, knocked away, good defensive play by Simmons, and Pacific will retain possession. Nice job by Simmons, 6'8", trying to battle inside against the 6'10", Mahaffey, used his quickness that time. Simmons led St. Joe's in blocked shots this season. He can get up there. Bowman. What Although Pacific, Candy's been a little quiet now the last couple of minutes. Well, what Pacific would like to do is really put together an inside-outside kind of game. And there, again, nobody comes to help because they're afraid of the dump pass to the two big guys inside. Tim Bowman just takes it in unmolested that time, and he's got 15 points in the game. And uh, here comes Pacific again. Now St. Joe's will slow it down. Davis. Anders guarding him. A lot of dribbling again on the offensive end. The shot clock's running down now. Nick 
by Simmons. And run up and in. Well, he, he kept possession of it and uh, still gets the two. Davis with 12 points in the game. That's an unbelievably tough shot, but St. Joe's has got a couple of great guys in the backcourt, and they're going to make plays when you need them to make plays. Davis has come on for a big second half here for St. Joe's. Walter still hasn't found the range. Had that one knocked away. Good defensive play, Davis, and he gets it at the other end, and Bolter fouls him. And a very frustrated Mark Bolter. Not only on that play, but in this game. Bolter may be frustrated. 0 for 5 from the field turned it over there, but that was an excellent play to commit that foul before Davis was able to get to the basket and get a two-shot opportunity. That's only team foul number six against Pacific, so there won't even be any free throws here. Lane Joe's with the basketball, 420 left to go. A couple of picks, turns back outside. Petrovic underneath is open. Brett Bay has made some big plays. The young man extremely strong. 22 points, four assists, three steals. That was a tremendous play right there. Again, bouncing off bodies, but finding the open man. Pacific, got to within a couple. But now St. Joe's has extended it again. 62-54. Bowman had some room at it, blocked by Simmons. Olawa Candy back to him. Bowman for three. Big bucket. And that's really important right there because St. Joe's now dropping in on Olawa Candy, forcing him to give up the ball. If they're going to start to hit from the perimeter, then that's going to really open up opportunity. Bowman's got four three-pointers and 18 points in the basketball game. 3.30 left on the clock. Austin College will play the winner of this game. They won the opener here uh, in the West. Knocked away, although a candy just stood there, and Davis tried to put the ball through him and couldn't. Davis forced it that time and didn't get it to go. Bolter. Nope, not yet. Great block out by Petrovic. And St. Joe's will slow it down. Three-minute mark. And I'll tell you what, Rasheed Bay looks like he is exhausted, and so Phil Martelli is going to get a timeout, I think, just to give his point guard a blow. St. Joe's taking the timeout. Second game here in the West. St. Joe's leading. The box game summary. You see the uh, turnovers and the picked up points off them. Pacific. Trying to get back into this thing, but St. Joe's not allowing it. They got the two. They're down 62-57 right now. Bay's been the leader for St. Joe's. 22 points in this ball game. Bay looks refreshed coming out of that timeout, and I think his ball handling skills are going to be very, very important as we come down the stretch here. And there's a big shot by Davis. Davis is 15 in the game. He's got three three-pointers. And he's hit a couple of big threes. He and Bay with three three-pointers between them in the last two St. Joe's possessions. Trey Weiler set the pick and an elbowing call underneath on the action. And it looks like it's going to go against Pacific. Not going Pacific's way right now with only 2.29 left to go. That'll be Treeweiler's fifth personal foul or fourth. Number four on him. He will come out of the game, however. And we'll walk it up the other way. Deval Simmons. The ball moves to the line. Simmons, a 65% free throw shooter. Damani tried to step in there. He's a 77% free throw shooter. The officials uh, said it may be not. <laughs> well, it's worth a try. It was a good effort, though. It's worth a try. Pierce is worth anyway. As he goes two for two from the line, four points for him in the game. St. Joe's 67, 57, back up to a 10-point lead. Davis is the guy who has been on Bolter most of the game and has done a super job pressuring the shots. Bolter finally gets the three to go down despite the pressure from Davis. Bolter, their leading three-point man, gets his first three of the game and his first field goal. As he is one for five from the floor. Off the front on Simmons' attempt. Not done yet. 
Minute 56 remaining. Simmons a 45% three-point shooter, but that shot was done too quickly. When you have a lead, you want to hang on to the ball for a little bit longer than they did. Walter. Happy looking. Walter trying to get free out deep. The ball and dies, but no. Nice rebound inside by Davis. Pacific now down seven points. Looks like they're going to try to foul, but you don't want to foul Rashid Bay. He's going to hold the ball. Bay will. And Bowman just stands in front, not fouling. And when the shot clock runs down, you have a guy in the backcourt like Rashid Bay who can hold the ball outside, and then you really expect him to do something successful with it. Positive move to the basket, and there he draws the foul. Just hung it, got it down to six seconds, and took it back into the middle. Oh, so St. Joe's up by seven. There you see the upcoming games. These are approximate start times in the east with the Fairfield, North Carolina game. Vanderbilt, Xavier in the Midwest, the Southeast. College of Charleston in Maryland, and uh, Kentucky will be going at it. The later games, there's the lineup with Indiana and Colorado. Big match up there. So whether or not see Bobby Knight moving on against the Dean in the second round. Free throw missed that time. Still a three-possession game. One minute left to go. Bowman all the way down. And Petrovic blocks it. That's not where Bowman wanted to be. And a whistle behind the play as we're under a minute left to go. at St. Joe's up by seven. Gary, I don't know that that was a bad place for Bowman to go. Yes, maybe he went in too deeply that time, but everybody on the Pacific team stood outside. Nobody cut to the basket, didn't give Bowman an opportunity to throw the ball anywhere. Once he got underneath there and nowhere to go, he could not get a shot off height-wise. Petrovic standing there with him. Simmons again will be going to the line for St. Joe's. In the story of the second half for St. Joe's has been some big, big buckets by Rashid Bay and Arthur Davis. And some good free shooting by Simmons. Was not supposed to be good at the line. And some good defensive adjustments. Ola Candy scored 10 points very quickly in the second half. Didn't look like there was anything St. Joe's could do to stop him, but they started doubling down Pacific. Didn't get the ball to go in from the perimeter. And so St. Joe's was able to cut them off inside, and that was Pacific's best offense. Simmons has had four big free throws here. He's got six in the game. He's hit four in a row. And as Phil Ola Martelli getting subs in here. As Ola Candy goes out of the game, Phil Martelli gets up and puts Terrell Myers back in. A little smaller lineup for Pacific, so Phil Martelli can go with a smaller lineup against the Hawks. Bowman brings it in. They'll look for three-point opportunities. Anders on the run and gun. No, it does. Rebound Davis. And he'll be fouled immediately by Anders, stopping the clock with 41.4 remaining. Now, Pacific made the big run midway through, and they did it with that man, Olawa Candy, underneath with the quick 10 points. But it looks like it's not going to be enough. Pacific, you're right, Gary, did make a couple of runs at St. Joe's in the second half, but every time St. Joe's had an answer, and normally it was either Rashid Bay or this young man right here at the free throw line, Davis, 13 of his 15 points in the second half, hit a couple of big three-pointers to blunt Pacific charges. And he'll get the free throw, 70% free throw shooter. And that just ought about do it, 41 seconds left. It's a now a four-possession basketball game. Good free throw shooting by St. Joe's in this game. And 71-60, they are on top with time running out. Going all the way in, will have it knocked away and uh, out of bounds. Pacific will retain possession under their own basket. The Hawks 14 for 18 in free throws in this game for St. Joe's. They've made them when they needed them. Bowman for three. Three-pointer, which carried Pacific all season. It's not in this game. Mahaffey will put that one in from three-point range. And the immediate foul on the pass in with 25 seconds remaining to go. And our Chevy players of the game from uh, Pacific. Tim Bowman, 18 points. Rashid Bay at the other end, 22 points, five assists. Those are our Chevrolet players of the game. And Bowman has just fouled out of this game. So Bowman being told that a career, the senior, is over. And 
obviously disappointed. There is Bay. What a great season for Tim Bowman. As we mentioned, his career scoring average coming into this year was 1.2 points a game, and yet he has an outstanding year. Averaging 20 minutes a game, scoring almost 11 points a game. And speaking of scores, Terrell Myers now at 999 points for his career. And will we turn that digital clock? There it is. Terrell Myers, 1,000. And 22 seconds remaining to go. The St. Joe's on top and about to put it away. Owens puts it in on the rebound. They will take the timeout with 19.1 remaining. Point one remaining. St. Joe's on top here. 73 to 65, led by Bay with 22 points, five assists. Davis, 17 points. 15 of those coming in the second half. Pacific, Bowman's got 18. The happy 13 coming off the bench. But for Pacific running out of time against St. Joe's ranked 12th, the Associated Press Bowl. And the immediate foul in the backcourt by Corey Anders. And that is team foul number 10 against Pacific. So Davis will get an opportunity to go to the free throw line for two shots. Rain Mahaffey on the bench, 13 points off that bench. And one of the big problems for Pacific today was Michael Olawakandi picking up those three early fouls in the game. And we got a brief glimpse in the second half of what his offensive presence could mean for Pacific when he scored 10 quick points. Virtually not available for the first half because of the fouls. That had to be a huge difference of him sitting on the bench. Oliver Candy, a junior engineering student at Pacific. Within. Obviously disappointed. It's hard to be productive when you're sitting on the bench, and he picked up those three very quick fouls and had to sit down. And Davis, a couple in there. He's got 19 now for Arthur Yao Davis in the game. 13 seconds remaining in it. Bolter, the man tied up. Goes for the three-pointer and misses. St. Joe's. Pacific's not going to foul. And this one is going to go into the history books. And St. Joe's is going to move on. For Mike Mayock and Dan Bonner, I'm Gary Thorne. We'll be saying so long from the Huntsman Center. Our final score, St. Joe's 75 and Pacific 65. They will be advancing. Boston College and St. Joe's will be matched up. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.